Hi, I'm Joe and uh, this is the second video in a three-part series about working with monitors within the Waves LV1 mixing console. Last time I went through how to work with monitors when you're the front of house engineer. Today we're going to take a look at how to set things up when you're the dedicated monitor engineer up on the stage. Just like last time, we're listening to Stone Mountain Orchestra and the mixes you will hear are the actual mixes from the tour that uh, Sebastian set up for the band. So first of all, a quick uh, recap. We have four layers and on the first layer we have kind of the, the main band. It's the drums, bass, keyboards and guitar. Next layer we have inputs for percussion, horns and all the vocals. Next layer, uh, these are talkback mi microphones, uh, uh, house music, uh, audience microphones, and also all the effects. Uh, and the last layer we will come back to later on. And all of these layers are duplicated, so mixer 1 and mixer 2 uh, look exactly the same. The fit controller is connected to mixer 2, so uh, anything I do on here will be reflected on the mixer 2 and uh, mixer 1 is the mixer that is kind of on the screen at, at all time so uh, when flipping through things on the physical console uh, nothing is changed up here on mixer 1 that is actually on the screen so the benefit of utilizing both mixer 1 and mixer 2 is that on the physical faders I can be in the kind of uh, main layer uh, and at the same time having sense on faders up on, on the screen uh, so I can flip f uh, through all of the uh, auxes and still have direct access to the master layer on these uh, physical faders. And the easiest way to set all of this up is to uh, make all the custom layers uh, th that, that you need in Mixer 1 then go to Mixer 2 and over here you can just uh, choose any uh, layer, uh, press anywhere and then just choose copy from Mixer 1, custom layer and then just uh, choose whatever you want, let's say the band and this will be identical to the band mix on Mixer 1. All right, so how to set all of this up? Uh, well, the starting point is that uh, on the, the kind of master layer, all of the channels are set to unity gain, so at, at zero, and I will then send uh, post fader to everything, to all the in ears or wedges. This means that if I turn something down in the master layer, it will be turned down everywhere. But there are a few exceptions to this, so uh, the main setup is that everything is sent post fader. Uh, the exceptions are, uh, for instance, the guitar is sent pre fader to the guitar player. The keyboard is sent pre fader to the keyboard player. The trumpet is sent pre fader to the trumpet player. You get the idea. So why send uh, some things pre-fader and uh, other things post-fader? Well, when you're the mo monitor engineer, you're actually mixing the show while, while it, it happens. So for some songs, maybe the, the guitars uh, are too loud, so you want to bring them th down just a bit for everyone. But if you bring the main fader down, you will uh, bring the guitar down everywhere. But if you were to bring it down in the guitar players in the air, you will have a really upset guitar player. So this is a way of kind of mixing things, but not screwing, screwing things up for the individual player. And this also helps when there's a problem. So say that the keyboard player have some, some issues, you can then turn the fader down on the physical console, which turns the keyboards down in everyone's in ear. Uh, but the actual keyboard player can still hear everything, so uh, he or she can sort things out and when it's uh, all said and done, just bring up the fader and keyboards are back in everyone's in-ears. And there's actually one more exception and it's for all of the vocals. So let's have a look at the vocals. So everything is sent pre or post fader. Uh, 
except for the vocals, and these are sent post pan. And the reason is, uh, in this case, we have a backing vocal, a second back backing vocal, and then the, the main vocal. But on a few songs, either uh, backing vocal one or two will actually be the, the lead vocal. So what Sebastian do in this case is when it's time for the backing vocal one to be the, the, the lead singer, uh, he pans it to the center, bring up the volume, and the, the lead vocal will be panned a bit to the left and be turned down a bit. So uh, they kind of switch places in everyone's in ears. Except there's actually one exception to this exception. So for all of the band, uh, the vocal mics are sent post fader, uh, but uh, for the vocalists themselves, it's sent pre fader because it would make no sense for the lead vocalist to suddenly hear herself in the in 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 the left side. So the vocal mics are sent pre fader to their own in ears. So there's actually one last exception to all of this, and it's for the saxophone and trombone microphone. Both of these have uh, solos uh, throughout the, the, the set, and almost everyone in, in the band have, have the, the horn section kind of panned quite far out to, to the, the sides, uh, and not super high in, in volume. So when it's time for the saxophone solo, it's not all that nice to just hear a little bit of the, of the saxophone uh, way out to the right side. So uh, sax and trombone are sent uh, kind of the same way as with the, the vocal mics. They are sent uh, post pan, except for the horn section. Again, it would make no sense for a horn section to have things m move around. So all of the horns to the horn section are sent pre fader. So in order to uh, hear how Sebastian works with all of this, we are listening to the in-ear mix for the drummer, Hampus. And in this session there will be a uh, saxophone solo. So at the start of the solo I will do nothing, kind of just leave it static. And then I will kind of uh, make the move that Sebastian hopefully will do just before the saxophone solo. So let's listen to the drums. Uh, in air mix. So yeah, you can really hear how big of a difference uh, just a small move like this uh, makes to, to, the, to the whole experience for, for uh, the drummer in, in this case. Uh, so uh, he will actually be able to hear the saxophone solo. But all of these are obviously starting points. So, uh, you know, after the sound check, the bass player comes up and, you know, I really don't want the, the saxophone solo in, in, in my, my ears, just, uh, just keep it to the side, no problem. Let's go into the saxophone and in the uh, bass in here we just put it pre-fader and then uh, whatever move I make on, on the console uh, it will not be affected to the bass player's uh, in ear system. So let's dig even deeper and uh, let's go to the monitor uh, layer and uh, let's go through all of this. So starting off, uh, we have the drums aux. Uh, so uh, when you hit the, uh, the drums mix, what you're listening to is actually the aux for the drums. 
But this one is not sent directly to the drummer's in-ears. This one is sent to the drums matrix. So there's a few reasons we set it up like this. And first of all, when you flip through the, the different uh, auxes, it might very well be that uh, say the, the, the keyboard aux is super loud in comparison to the vocal aux. Uh, it would make sense for you to kind of bring down the volume of the keyboard aux in your in-ears uh, without having it affecting uh, the, the keyboard player's in-ears. So all of these auxes, uh, these are the volumes for each aux feeding your in-ear mix, you, you as the monitor engineer. So the drums aux feeds into the drums matrix and the matrix volume is the actual volume for the drummers in ear. Same thing for everyone else. If the bass player tells you to just turn everything up because he had too many beers, you can just raise the volume on the matrix and it will not affect the volume in, in your uh, in-ears. Furthermore, you can actually tailor the sound to fit uh, different kind of in-ears. So as you can see here, Sebastian has put up an, an EQ on all of the matrices. So going into the, the drums, this is the uh, kind of master EQ for, for uh, the drum in-ears and this EQ will not affect what Sebastian here in his uh, in-ears. Uh, same for bass, keyboard, guitar. So uh, everyone has a slight different e master EQ to compensate for different kinds of uh, in-ear headphones. It would make no sense uh, to have all of these changes uh, into uh, the monitor engineer's in-ears. So putting this EQ on the matrix uh, makes uh, way more sense. Another benefit of uh, sending auxes through matrices is that any matrix can have uh, an another source uh, fed into it. So for instance, let's go into the drum matrix. Uh, here we have the EQ and here we have the uh, matrix console. So he obviously had the drums aux. But uh, on this tour, uh, I did uh, the front of house sound and I had a talkback microphone. So my talkback microphone from the front of house uh, is fed straight into the matrix. And it would actually be possible to have any other source fed straight into this. For instance, if you have a drum tech, you can take the microphone from the drum tech, let's say, that the drum tech uses, uh, let's just go with uh, channel 28. Then you can have the microphone from the drum tech feed straight into the drums matrix. Uh, and this makes sure that the monitor engineer don't have to listen to, to what the drum tech tells the, the drummer since uh, it's not fed via the uh, aux, but directly to the drums matrix. And lastly, we have some DCAs. So uh, this first one, uh, if we take a look at the faders, this one just turns everything down. But since every musician has their own instrument pre-fader, if I turn this down, uh, I will turn everything down but their own instrument. So after sound check, if they want to to practice or, or try some, something out, I can turn this down and anyone can just uh, keep playing on their own instrument and not bother an, uh, anyone else. Next one is uh, just a DCA for all the auxes. So if I want to turn everything up or down or, or mute, uh, there's uh, just a, a bottom for, for that. And this is for all the matrices, uh, same thing. Uh, turn ev everything up or down or mute. So yeah, that was the kind of basic concept of, of uh, working as a monitor engineer within the Waves LV1 system. You can obviously dig much deeper into all of this. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to answer anything I can. Take care.